Welcome everybody. I hope you um, got touched. I hope that you can be a Johnny too. So as you can tell from the video today, our um, value is on service. And the four cornerstones are helpfulness, charity, compassion, and renewal. So I want to just introduce you a little bit to service. These two gentlemen are tycoons. And they asked, um, how did you get to where you are? And they said, it's because we helped others get to the top. And in doing so, we got ourselves to the top. David Stewart's with O.C. Tanner. And Todd Nordstrom is um, with Nordstrom and a very successful publishing tycoon. Penn State University was established in 1751. And the reason it was established but their people in that town to get a better education. If you can't hear me, we'll talk loud. OK, great. And then this young guy took it upon himself to send a thousand text messages in, in um, less than six hours because one of his friends wanted to commit suicide. And in, in that way, he prevented the situation and be, be, received a Peacemaker Award just recently. So you know about Zappos. Zappos isn't successful for their shoes. They're successful for their customer service, which has put him right to the top. And everyone knows Stephen Covey. Somebody asked him once, Dr. Covey, do you have any advice for people who are trying to find their dream job? Listen to his answer. Find ways you can add value to the organization, in other words, serve others. Then any job is your dream job. We hope that that's all of our attitudes. So the first cornerstone's helpfulness. All right. What do you use that or no? Yeah. No. All right. Good morning. <laughs> helpfulness. All right. That's our first cornerstone of service. So let's talk about helpfulness a little bit. It is not my job. And first, before we start this, I'm going to start with my lovely picture. Um, I don't know how many of you folks have seen stuff like this before, but there's a lot of these types of pictures. It's not my job. It's just a perfect example for this picture. Um, you, you need to see the job description as a floor, not a ceiling. You don't need to see that as your restriction, but as that's what you start with, you need to go above and beyond. Obviously, these people, their job was to paint lines. That's all they saw. I mean, I guess the, the roadkill didn't count for anything. So, you know, it's that kind of situation we need to take part in all of our jobs. Uh, real service may mean stepping outside of your comfort zone. Uh, question for all of you guys. Who is, respons who is responsible for answering call lights in the hospital? Everybody. Now, a lot of times it's, it's pushed off while the CNA or the nurse is going to get it. Anybody who's walking around here can answer a call light. That's a good example for this job is a floor, not a ceiling. All right, don't forget about training. Here's my little motorcycle guy practicing in the playground. Okay, so if someone needs trained, we need to train them. Uh, we don't need to leave them uh, so they can continue to make mistakes. The biggest problem uh, with that, ooh, Zelda, great. Uh, the biggest problem is, uh, is, is that we don't train people correctly sometimes and they just they make mistakes. They continue to make mistakes and we wonder why they're not improving. We need to make sure we focus on the training piece. Uh, who is responsible for making sure a new employee is prepared to do their job though? Supervisor. Pretty much everybody that's working with them though. I mean if they're making a mistake you can ask them to tell them they're doing something incorrectly or just help them out a little bit. Leaving them, leaving them in the dark isn't just the responsibility of who trained them, it's everybody's. Okay, service does not equal enabling. Yes. Okay, service does not mean you need to do for others what they should do for themselves. Now, that's a, that's a hard one, especially if you're in the nursing department, you want to help people out at all times. Sometimes the best thing you can do for them is to have them do it for themselves while you're there to support them. I love that dog. Okay, next piece is charity. I'm Denise now for a little while. Uh, the second cornerstone of service is charity. You give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. All right, everybody know the story of King Midas? Okay, everything he, he uh, touched turned to gold. Midas learned to his dismay that a treasure hoarded is a treasure diminished. That's kind of the opposite version of charity. It's a thought, uh, thought process that's a little bit different here. Now this is the opposite. This is the form of charity. Johnny Appleseed. You guys know the story of Johnny Appleseed probably? Okay, crisscrossing the American frontier, Johnny Appleseed created a legacy and con that continues to renew itself. A treasure shared is a treasure multiplied. It's pretty important. All right, Ben and Jerry's. So 
I was told uh, just yesterday that they continue to do this, but they, give, they gave away ice cream uh, for free, basically, uh, in order to try to create their business. You know, that version, or vision of charity actually improved their business even more uh, than they could have without. And they still, to this day, I guess, give away free ice cream. So if any of you guys know the days that they do this, I would like to know that. <laughs> All right, don't wait to strike it rich. Stop saying that someday you'll get around to it and do it now. So I like the little round to it there. So we're handing out pennies right now. So this is a challenge for each of you guys. Uh, we're going to ask that each of you guys put this little penny in your shoe. And it, you need to be able to help somebody out, pay it forward. Uh, we challenge you within the next week uh, to be able to actually get around to helping somebody else out in some way, shape, or form. Uh, when you do that, you can take the penny out of your shoe. But we ask, until that happens, keep the penny in your shoe just as a reminder that you need to get around to it. We'll let that pass around a little bit here. Observe and then serve. Charity begins with an attitude, and a generous attitude begins with a smile. That is the charity piece. Sorry, we didn't realize we had props we had to work with. Just, I want you to know Denise was with us every second of the way until last night. She left this morning to see her grandkids, but she's helped us with every bit of this, and we're appreciative of that. Okay, and third cornerstone of service is compassion. Often the greatest service we give is to, to each other, and as a reminder of that, in the last year and a half, we've given over $20,000 to our own. We um, do community service. We've done the angel tree for ever since I've been here and before. And anonymous service inside and outside the organization. There's a story about that is um, I was not here but learned of uh, a patient that was spending her last minutes in the hospital. And when the family was called to come in because it was the very end of, the, uh, of her time here, um, they walked into the room and there were four nurses, two at the foot of the bed and two at the head of the bed. And um, the family can't even talk about that story now without realizing how much love the nursing staff gave to this patient, how grateful we are for the compassion that goes on in this hospital every single day. So um, we're all going to be young, old, strong, weak at one point in our lives. So we need to have compassion for each other no matter what stage of life we're in. And there's a million random acts of service that you can do. The most recent is, you know, Ethan Van Leuven just passed away yesterday. Um, the town where he lived in Utah decided they were going to make his last days of this debilitating disease happy for him. So within a week, they celebrated Halloween, his birthday, and Christmas. And all of that neighborhood has the Christmas lights still up and are going to keep him up through Christmas. So that's a tribute to that um, wonderful smile that little boy has touched everybody that he knows and people that don't even know him. I want you to watch this story. This is a remarkable story that prevented World War III. And back when I was trying to get it to that subway And back when I was 
I go back to the days. Before the politics, then we know the rap game. And back when ain't nobody listen to my mixtape. And back before I tried to cover up my slang. But just as long as they know what's up, Bobby Brake. So can I get a wish to end the politics and get back to the music that started this? So here I stand, and then again I say, I'm hoping we can make some wishes out of airplane. Can we pretend that So because of this, um, Gail Halverson, over 23 tons of chocolate with the help of American children who tied the parachutes and the American confection companies throughout the United States that donated the chocolate to the very end. And 25 of the, his playing comrades helped. And they do credit him for uh, preventing World War III during this conflict. So no matter what you do, start with one person and pass it on. Um, challenge it, pass it on. Pull the so pull the strings, everybody, pull a string. Oh. <laughs> Take one and pass them around. There you go. Eric, you can have mine. Thank you. one like a All right, moving to the fourth cornerstone, which is renewal. Um, it starts with the hero's journey. If you wish to make a lifetime of devotion serving others, you must make the commitment of renewing yourself. And there's a great quote by Abraham Lincoln. Ask for help, then be willing to receive it. Like most heroes, we need a mentor or a friend to help us through our trials. And a great mentoring quote. Um, and then, I thought this was a great picture for stepping outside the box. Renewal is about finding something you didn't have, and if you stay in your norm, your normal routine, that's all you'll have all the time is your normal routine. Um, renewal doesn't always mean change. Every time you go on a hero's journey, it doesn't mean you have to come back with something new. It's just something new about yourself. Thinking new, a new way of thinking. There's a great quote by Christopher Reeves. The best Superman, I think. <coughs> Um, and then Pam's going to take it from here. So something to think about. If you're not enjoying the journey, the destination will be a disappointment. This is proof of that. Pay close attention. <laughs>
จะไม่ได้อะไรเลยไม่ได้รวยไม่ได้ออกทีวีไม่มีใครรู้จักไม่ได้ยินชื่อเสียงที่มากขึ้นสิ่งที่เขาได้คือได้แค่ความรู้สึกได้เห็นความสุขได้เข้าใจได้ความรักสิ่งที่เงินซื้อไม่ได้ได้โลกที่สวยงามกว่าเดิมในชีวิตคุณอะไรคือสิ่งที่คุณต้องการมากที่สุด Ignore the last bit So don't wait What can you do today And now, without further ado, let's welcome Jeff Foxworthy. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? I'm worried about my mustache. I don't think it's going to stay on. All right, I need one contestant. So who wants to play Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Chrissy, it is. Yep, come right on up. And then go ahead and pick three classmates. Oh, These are people you're going to cheat off, so pick the smart ones. Uh, let's go with Karen. Mindy. Come on up. Oh, don't just sit there. <laughs> so, since we're time crunched, I can't have you answer all the questions, so I need you to answer three on the left side and one on the right side, and then we'll go for the game winner. So go ahead and choose which one on the left side you want. Compassion. What was one of Gal Halverson's nicknames? Uh, uh, you can use your cheats. We want to stick with that answer. That's my final answer. Wrong show. You want to do it? I can do it. <coughs> You're right. Karen, you can sit down. Where's there's some there's some little cards. All right, go back. Thousand. Yep, thousand. We have time for more. All right. Two more on the left and one. On the right, so you can go in any order you want. Okay, let's go with spark plug terminology. <laughs> what is a sparky buck? Sparky buck is currency that the spark plugs hand out for people going above and beyond for the core values of the hospital. Worth one dollar, you get to fit it at the shop or in uh, the cafeteria. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> Two more to go. Yep, two more on the left. Okay, let's go with <coughs> reaction value number 11. So hopefully you were paying attention. What are the four cornerstones of service? Charity, renewal, compassion, and helpfulness? A. A. That is correct. <laughs> these, these two over here are lucking out. I know. One more on the left. One more on the left. So you just let her take the one on the right. It's all right. Take it. Let her. Let her have the math question. Left. It's all right. Left. Do your math and then come back to that. This side. Okay. Let's go with helpfulness. Who is responsible for answering call lights in the hospital? Everybody. 
the closest person in the room, regardless of what they do in the hospital. <laughs> Let's do the math question. She wants to do the math question. I want a math question, for sure. What is the formula for exponential growth? <laughs> <laughs> I would like to ask a friend. <laughs> <laughs> Your choices are y equals a, a. times 1 plus r to the power of x, or minus r, or math is hard. I'm really tossed up between A and C. <laughs> <laughs> Not really sure. I, I really actually do want to peek or copy or all of the above. <laughs> Who do you want to peek or copy off of? You can peek and, and, and Mindy will tell you her answer, or you can copy either of their answers. Charlie. Charlie, help me out, bud. Go with A. A? A it is. Good. And that is correct. <laughs> So let's do the game winning question. Let's click it again. Who has the power of service starts with whom? Me. Or you. You. You know it. Excellent. Hit the right. I have some. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're welcome. Yes. Can you make sure that Charlie has that? <laughs> Sorry, but you're one of the ones we can't hear. Am I, am I live? You're live. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else new? All right. Well, Trevor, you're up. Okay, so we've already uh, kind of gone through some of the, the new employees. Um, I would like to, to welcome a few more that may not be with us today. Um, but we have uh, Whitney Loem. She's been working with us for quite a while as a, as a student. And now she's working as an x-ray te technologist with the radiology department. Sheila Simkin, admissions in the Afton Clinic. Uh, Jerry Hunsaker, therapy aide. And she's working over in the, is she here? She there is. she is. She's hiding from us. <laughs> Welcome, Jerry Lee. Uh, Jonathan Franklin, working as a custodian in floor tech. You probably won't see him much unless you work on night shift. Uh, Kenneth, Mc, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher his last name, McEwen. Um, he's working as a CNA on med surge. Kimberly Keene, working as a cook in dietary. Is she here? Heidi, okay. Heidi McMurdo, working as a housekeeper in environmental services. Misty McIntyre, cash poster in the business office. I thought I saw her. She's hiding. <laughs> Tony Kaiser as the OR director in surgery. So please welcome these people as you see them and help them feel comfortable here. Um, next thing I wanted to discuss a little bit, and this is as a this comes as a request from Leighton, so if you are upset at anybody, just find Leighton afterwards. But um, we, we've, st <laughs> we've still uh, struggled a little bit with getting uh, workers' comp paperwork filled out in a timely manner. So I just wanted to remind everybody that if you have an accident, you do need to fill out your workers' comp paperwork. You go to the ER first but then come to HR as soon as possible afterward and fill out the, the paperwork. In the ER, they're gonna send you down to do a drug test. You do have to do the drug test within two hours of the incident or accident. So make sure that we're, we're getting this taken care of in a timely manner. And really this is, workers' compensation is a benefit for you. It protects you. It pays for um, the injury if you, if you have an accident and it's on work time. So make sure that you fill out the paperwork so that we're, there's no problems with having that taken care of. So please, uh, please help us out with that. Then the other thing I wanted to talk about is open enrollment. And um, we are working on a new system to make this electronic. So we are, we are hoping that by uh, the first part of December, we'll have this ready to go so that when you come up here, 
You can sit down with one of us at a computer. We'll fill out all the paperwork online and it'll, it'll just go electronically and you won't have to sign any of the paper waivers or anything like that. It'll all be electronic. So, and that is planned for the first part of December. We, we still do not have a, a set date yet as we're trying to finalize all the, the plans and the, the agreements with this. Um, I can tell you on the insurance that we have, we have made some changes with dental. So our dental carrier is different. The benefits will not be changing though. So we made sure that they had the same network and the same coverage and everything and their carryover benefit will still be able to carry over. Medical will remain, will, will remain self-insured um, for the medical insurance. And it looks like there's going to be a slight increase with the, the um, medical insurance. So, but we're hoping it's, uh, it's not too, too much for the employees, but it's, it looks like what, six, 6.4%. 6 so that's not a slight increase. I guess it's, it's, it's a pretty good increase, but, but it's lower than most we, we were expecting Double the, increase. yeah, so. We're happy with that, I guess, if you can be happy with an increase, but it could be worse. So, anything else? All right. Vision is going to be changing as well, or is it, it's still through VSP, so no change there. And there's no change to the rates on that part, so. Life insurance will change. Life insurance will change, so. So go to open enrollment. That's yeah. That's, that, what day is that, did you say? Um, we haven't got a set date yet, but it'll be the first part of December. Um, but this year, everything should go a little bit better just because it's all going to be online. It's not going to be the hassle of getting the paper forms and everything. So once it's filled out there, it goes to our carriers, and it's a lot easier for us this way and easier for the employees as well. So the companies are changing, but all the benefits are really all staying exactly the same. So that's the yep. message. So it's just a matter of paperwork, but it's all staying the same. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Joe, can you come up here? Thank you. Hey, maybe, maybe we got a math question for you. Here. Uh -oh. I yeah, grab one grab one of those boxes here. So you're on display. <laughs> <laughs> so it, do you remember last month we wore the years? Well, that was about uh, we want to hear from you. So we've actually got several boxes. How many boxes have we got about? We've got six boxes. Yeah. Okay. So the boxes are going to be in strategic locations throughout the, the facilities. I think we're even putting one in Thane, yeah, right? We're going in Thane and Alpine as well. Um, we're just yeah. working with maintenance departments so they can get them secured to the walls. Yeah. So w the whole purpose of these is to, we want to hear from you. So it's going to be, we're going to have some uh, paper with some questions on them. But you don't have to necessarily follow the questions. You can put whatever you want in the boxes. It's really an opportunity for you to speak out. You can be anonymous, you can put your name, and we don't, we, it doesn't really matter. It's just that any good ideas you have or con constructive criticisms, anything like that, we want to listen to you and hear from you. And that's what this is about. So. There will be three basic questions. What are we doing well? What can we improve on? And anything else we didn't ask? Kind of <laughs> fill in the blank. Yeah. And it's not just for staff. This is also for the public. So there will be a big marketing campaign going on. So as the public comes in as well, they're welcome to fill these out. And we're even going to have it online, so we're going to have, uh, we'll, we'll be working on it. We're going to get a little QR so you can scan it and just go online and answer the three questions. It'll download for you. So, anyway, we hope you participate. We want to hear from you. So, thank you, Joe. Okay, so this year we've been doing the 12 core action values. Next year, if your department directors have not uh, talked with you yet, we're going to work on service projects. And uh, hopefully they have started to talk with you because uh, we want to get your ideas of what we can do for service projects. There will be up to eight hours of your time that's on the clock to do service projects. So if you want to go beyond that, that's fine. But it's up to eight hours of time to, to do that. So um, we really want to take this serious. It's something that we feel is important that we give back to the community. Uh, that you participate in this and uh, so we want to make it fun too so uh, the department directors have to submit by the end of the year a, a plan uh, of what your departments will be doing so 
please uh, provide your input to them. Uh, so I, I think it can be a lot of fun. So, all right, Mike, I'm going to turn it over to you. You're next. Thank you. How's my voice, Pam? Is it carry it all ever? Okay, I'll try. Hi, everyone. I, w I wanted to uh, just uh, take a few minutes this morning and share with you our uh, some of our uh, patient satisfaction scores. This is this report is just a little bit different than we've had in the past. I want you to take a look here. I'm, I've got we've got uh, nine columns or of uh, numbers, and from right to left, the first three columns are. January through March of 2014. The next three columns are April through June of 2014. And then the, the far left columns here are July through September of 2014. And I'd like to draw your attention to just maybe the, the bolded areas. You can see in, uh, in January, the doctor communication, we are at 97th percentile ranking. April through June, we dropped down to 75th percentile. This quarter, oh, thank you, Pam, appreciate that. This quarter, we're down to 34th percentile, but we are, are maintaining our top box scores of more than eight out of 10 people are telling us we get an always, but uh, the competition is tougher now. So let's go down here to responsiveness of hospital staff. First of the year, we were uh, at 22nd percentile ranking. Remember, this is amongst 450 hospitals we compare with. We ranked 22nd on the 22nd percentile in January through March. We rose to 53rd percentile April through June, and now we're up to 82nd percentile in uh, July through September. Why do you think that is? Any ideas? Yeah, we're understanding Meditech better. I think that's a big share of it. You know, we, we have had responses from patients that early on in these, in these two early quarters, uh, mostly in the second quarter, we had patients giving us verbatim comments about how much the patient care staff was complaining about Meditech. That kind of carried over to our patients then, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily just in the hospital, but in therapy, in radiology, in infusion. Our patients were hearing how much we did not like Meditech. So now you can see that that, that is changing. Uh, responsiveness of hospital staff, we're back up in the, in the top quartile, which is great. Uh, cleanliness of room and bathroom. Well, we, we really suffered the first two quarters, but now we're up above average. Uh, at, at nearly eight out of 10 people give us an always, that the room is always clean. Uh, let's look at quietness of room, a area around the room at night. Boy, first quarter we, had, we were on the bottom of the heap. We started making progress second quarter, third quarter we are up in the top quartile, which is really excellent. Pain management, kind of the same thing. Look, we went from being on the last place to now we're 93rd percentile. Uh, same thing, we, we can, you know, almost all across the board, we have gone most, for the most part, we, in the first two quarters we were suffering, and now we've made gains in recovery. And if you remember the last couple of months, we've talked about how HealthStream communicated to me that every hospital that goes through a electronic health record conversion suffers in their patient satisfaction scores and the challenge is to bring back those scores as quickly as we can and I see that we've done a great job of bouncing back in our scores and I, and I think that's very commendable for all of you to, to make that effort to bounce back and to communicate to our patients in a way that they don't feel our negativity or our stress level in, in their patient care. And I think that's, I think that's awesome. So I, I, I applaud all of you for, for taking those steps 
to, to bring us back. And, and, and really, it's all about our patient, right? It's all about our patient and, and, and their experience here. So thank you very much. I, I, I don't know as I need to share any more with you, that other than just you can see over the last three quarters how things have changed for us. And I look forward to our fourth quarter of this calendar year being even better than the third quarter. So thank you very much. Oh, okay, I'd be happy to do that. Just a word about our construction activities. Out here, uh, you can see what's going on. I always tell you that. You can see what's going on for yourself out there. Uh, we continue to have tours every Friday afternoon starting at 3 o'clock. So if you're interested in taking a tour of the ER, please come to Pam Wolfley's desk and sign up, and we'll be happy to give you a tour. Uh, things are moving along really well. We're uh, about ready to start uh, doing the, the perfect taping and on the drywall in the ER. A lot of electrical work still going on, a lot of uh, mechanical work for medical gas. And this morning in our construction meeting, we were talking about the access controls for the doors. Uh, many of the doors in the new ER and in the new OR are going to require you to use your badge to get through the door. So we're going to really tighten up our access in, in those areas here in the future. And then that will proliferate in the few, next few years out into the hospital. So all of our employee entrances and exits will be access control. And we'll, we're, really gonna, we're really taking seriously the security uh, at Star Valley Medical Center over the next period of time. We're going to really make some upgrades to, to uh, provide better security to the hospital. So uh, I can tell you right now, uh, working out there, we have the stucco guys working outside. The roofing guys are working outside to get the roofing finished this week. Hopefully the weather's going to cooperate with us to get those things done. You might, have, you might see a tent going up out there, uh, plastic to keep things warm while the stucco dries. But the, the, so there are a lot of things going on. You can see that uh, sidewalks are finished and asphalt is done and, and the new parking areas are, are, are finished up. We've got some striping left to do on those areas, but things are moving right along. I think we're right on schedule. To, to be in the ER when we'd anticipated, and the OR is coming along very well too. Uh, it, it, the next, this next six to nine months will be very complicated in how we keep the OR up and operational because of all the construction that's gonna take place around the two ORs. And so we'll be working really closely with Tony and the surgery department on that as well as other departments in the hospital to, to uh, make sure we can stay in business and our patients get the care they need. Uh, one item I want to talk to you about, I know we've, we've talked very extensively in the past about the ambulance going back to the emergency room doors versus coming in the front door of the hospital. And recently we've contemplated a lot the ramifications of that, uh, specifically regarding how it will, would disrupt the construction. And as you can see out there, I mentioned we got stucco guys and roofing guys and all sorts of contractors out there. And I walked in the new OR part of the building and there are pipes laying all over the ground and there is duct work laying all over the place. And, and we just feel like if we interrupt the construction process, it's going to slow the construction down by having an ambulance come back there and, and the disruption that that potentially would have on the construction. That as well as a, a pretty big infection prevention concern, having whatever you get on the gurney's wheels through the construction area to get to the ER. And plus we want to protect the construction workers too. So. We've, we've uh, made the decision that we're going to keep the ambulance coming to the front door of the hospital until the new ER is available to be used. And, you know, everybody has done such a great job stepping up and, and helping out there, and we really appreciate all those who have done that. And, and I think it's, ve it's very efficient now. The public is very cooperative with us during this phase of the project, so we're just going to keep coming to the front door. Mike Fleming, I've spoken with him, and 
and uh, EMS is comfortable with that. Uh, I think they've got a good process now, and so we'll just continue that until the ER is finished. So uh, thank you again for your cooperation in that and, and for your continued assistance there. So thanks, Charlie. Thank you. So I just want to let you know that Meditech, um, we attested for stage one, year one in the hospital last week, and just want to congratulate you all on your hard work, making sure that we got the numbers on that. Um, we're well above what stage one requires, which is good because um, meaningful use doesn't go away. So this next year, from the 1st of October till the end of September 2015, we'll be in stage one, year two for the hospital. Um, so just keep doing what you've been doing because you've been meeting the, um, the requirements for state for meaningful use. Um, so we'll congratulate you there for that. Um, the doctors are in their attestation phase for stage two, year one, um, and that has some pretty heavy requirements for them. Um, they are meeting all of those requirements. The one the thing that I would ask you to do is that if you happen to go see one of our providers for any visits is to log into your patient portal and there's a message button that says to go to messaging and send your doctor a message because that's um, part of stage two requirements is that we get 5% of all patients to communicate with their doctor through that secure messaging. So if you know anybody that sees a doctor, just say, hey, have you, did you log on to your portal? Did you send your doctor a message? So please get the word out in the community because that's a piece that the doctors don't have direct control over and is going to require a pretty concerted effort on our part to make sure that they meet that. Uh, messaging requirements. So log on to your patient portal and uh, send your doctor a message and say, just wanted to send you a message that you're doing a great job or whatever you want to send them. They may or may not respond, but you know, it doesn't require they respond back to us. We just need to send them a message. So if you could get the word out, that would be most helpful. Um, kind of spread the word that we've got the patient portal and that you can communicate with your doctors through that messaging part. So um, we may have to do some additional marketing to kind of get the word out to the community so that we can meet that requirement but it's only five percent but you know five percent is still kind of high when this is something completely new and people aren't used to doing it so um, but the doctors are doing great you know they're meeting all of the requirements that they need to for stage two which is which is to be commended because they're pretty stringent so um, anybody have any questions on Meditech or on this meaningful use process all right thanks all right, I wanted to show our award that we got. Uh, Rowan Anderson, our board chair, and I went to Kansas City into a, uh, a conference, and, uh, and there was a special breakfast to honor the top 20 hospitals. So we were, it, it, it was pretty exciting, actually, and we felt like we were treated like royalty uh, being at that conference, you know, and uh, the, the 20 hospitals that were represented, I think it was, uh, you know, kind of a, uh, you know, as, as as Rowan put it, you know, our board chair, he said, this is a big deal, you know, and uh, and it really was. And and, uh, and I got to speak for just a minute. Actually, I, I spoke at a, at, on a session, too, with Joe Ty, but, but uh, when we received that award, you, you know, I mean, my, what I said is that I'm accepting this on behalf of our staff because, you know, it really is all of our staff in, in what you've guys done to, to achieve that. So it, it was a great honor to, to be there, and I wish all of you could be there. Um, but it was good. Uh, just an update uh, as far as the, the board meeting we had yesterday. Uh, there is five seats that are up for reelection um, come Tuesday. Tuesday's the election, and uh, so there's six uh, people running for five seats. So, so unfortunately, one of them is not going to, to make it, but, uh, but all six of them are great. You know, five of them are current board members. The sixth one is, is somebody in the community that would actually do a, a great job, too. So, um, you know, I'm not telling you how to vote, but I just hope you do go out and vote on Tuesday because, uh, you know, it is, uh, yeah, I mean, a huge part of, of our organization is who our board members are, and, and we have a great board now. So I encourage you to go out and vote. The other topic, I guess, to, to bring up is the Maverick building. Uh, you know, we, we are in the process of, of purchasing the Maverick building, and 
it's going to be a, a longer process. It'll be January before that closes, but we don't see any issues of, of that happening. So, uh, you know, some some people say, well, why are we buying that building? And and uh, and it's interesting. We just this morning uh, had a, an architect come through that helped us with our master plan of our facilities, and uh, he was here a year ago helping us develop our master plan. And and one of those areas that we have in our master plan is is what do we do with as we grow with office type people um you know the office staff and you know because they don't necessarily need to be in the building it's nice that everybody's in the hospital we would want everybody as close as we are now but unfortunately uh you know the the price that we're paying for our, our addition is about 350 dollars a square foot uh we are getting the Maverick building much, much lower. In fact, very, very reasonable because we have uh, some, some uh, people in the community that's actually helping us buy that building. So we're very fortunate that what we're paying for the building is probably you know, less than, than half of the value, which is, so it's, it's kind of a no brainer why we're purchasing it because it's, uh, it's, it's an excellent deal for the hospital. You know, I have to say that the people at Maverick are, are very, uh, they're, they're giving it to us or selling it to us at, at a reduced rate. So they're helping us on the Maverick side, but then also some very uh, generous people in the community is helping us purchase it. So what do we do with the building once we get it? That's the next thing. And, and, uh, and what we are looking at is, uh, you know, the business office makes a lot of sense you know, to, to have our billers and, and uh, to, because we're looking at where the business office currently is, is opening up the, the main entry of the hospital into a much better waiting area, uh, registration area. So that's a logical one. Accounting's logical to move accounting. Um, human resources is, is, is one of the areas we're targeting. And I know that's a little bit harder, you know, of having human resources, because um, that's a service that we all use. Um, but also, you know, there, there's ways to deal with that and, and have them have some hours here at the hospital, uh, you, you know, on a daily basis. And, and uh, the three of them can rotate through here and, and, and have some, some presence here. But also, you know, we live in Wyoming, so a half a mile down the road, that's like, like right next door, you know. So I think we, we realize that, that, that uh, we... we, we you know, we, we drive a long ways, we, we, we walk a long ways, we, it's just part of our nature. And I think, so we'll, we'll make it work. Um, so there will be some other people that'll move there. Um, it's 10,000 square feet. So initially we won't fill up the building. We won't, we, we just won't. And, uh, and it'll probably take a few months uh, even after we get it to, to equip it and, and make it the way we want it before um, some, some departments will move there. But we're, we're, you know, looking at, at the hospital and the growth, one of the areas that, uh, that we're looking at now is a cardiac rehab program. And uh, so we're looking at where human resources is as being a, a perfect location for a cardiac rehab program. So, so we're going to backfill, you, you know, as, as uh, some of the people leave the hospital itself to backfill it with patient care services which ultimately that's what we're here for we're here to to have services that that uh, for the community and so it's it's going to be a, a change but changes aren't always bad and uh, and for the people that are going to move over there there is a a, a a kitchen there so and hopefully you'll still come over here and use uh, use the services as kelvin and his staff uh, are preparing great food so we we want you to still come over here and be attached to to the hospital so that was the main things at the at the board meeting uh, yesterday and i don't know pam do you want to go through our our uh, list of activities coming up because we have a lot coming up that's well, starting with friday so friday there's a, um, going to be a costume contest we're hoping at 11 we haven't confirmed that with the resident jeff but um the 11 o'clock, there will be lunch from 11 to 1, potluck, soup and salad, bring a recipe if you want, but bring something and join us. And then um, Movember will kick off during that time. Yeah, so come prepare to grow a beard for the month of November. Oh. And there's the pumpkin. That means you have to come clean shaven on, uh, on uh, Friday. Is there a costume contest? Yes. 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 There's a costume contest. Yeah. 
and a pumpkin contest, which they, we need your pumpkins by Friday, by before Friday. By around 10 o'clock Friday morning, we'll be judging the pumpkins. They can be painted, carved, or the special edition ones with facial hair in November. <laughs> so, okay. And then this upcoming years of service dinner next week on Wednesday for those that are celebrating a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, up to 35 years this year. We've got three recipients, I think. And so that'll be for them and their directors. Um, and December 12th will be our holiday breakfast <coughs> this year. And then mark your calendars for January 14th. We're having an employee spouse dinner with something special. So I'll let you know about that later. Kelvin, on Friday, are you supplying the desserts? Yep, we're bringing pumpkin desserts. Okay. So we just need soups and salads. Soups and salads. Okay. All right. Good. And let's open it up. Anybody have any questions, comments, anything from you guys? Yeah. Okay. Come on up. I missed focus. Focus uh, was August. We had nominees for Melody Johnson, Mandy Putt, and Narthane Clinic, Chris Hinton, Dr. Kirk, Derek Greenwald, and Amy Johnson, and Colleen David. The final uh, person who won this really got most of the votes, and it was Chris Hinton. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> she here? No. Okay. Make her come see me so I can get a photo, please. I'll make her come next. She'll be in the next. Okay. Okay. All right. Mr. or Mrs. Enthusiasm for October um, with the cornerstones of attitude, energy, curiosity, and humor. We had a three-way fight with Wayne Knopfsinger Nof of Alpine Clinic, Chrissy Jensen, and Calvin Klein. Not Chrissy Jensen pulled it out. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, and this next month will be uh, Mr. or Mrs. Service, and I will try to get the nominees out faster this time. What Thanks. September. September was August. Sep September yeah. was, it wasn't August, sorry. I can't do backwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. All right.